It's rough, boys. It's really rough. Granted, we're only one episode in, so making sweeping judgments on story, characters, and overall writing is more than a bit unfair. But that hasn't stopped me from bitching about stuff on the internet before. So, here we go. The first thing that stands out when watching House of the Dragon is the noticeable downgrade in the sets and costumes. All the costumes and props that were not clearly recycled from Game of Thrones look like they were bought from the discount bin at a Spirit Halloween, and the CGI goes from okay for TV to holy fuckballs I've seen better fire effects in PS1 FMVs. It's been a minute since I last saw the good seasons of Game of Thrones, and a decade or more since I finished the books. But I thought Targaryens were supposed to have platinum or silver hair, not Grandpa White. All the Targaryens in this show look like cringy Sephiroth cosplayers with hideously cheap wigs as opposed to the magic-infused and mysterious other race that they are portrayed as in the novels and lore. The writing in general comes off as little more than a fanfiction of A Song of Ice and Fire. See, both the books and the first couple seasons of the show tried to have characters speak and act in a manner that at least sometimes tried to be an approximation of how people in a world based largely on medieval England would speak and act. But in House of the Dragon, everyone just speaks like they're at a modern day dinner party, with any attempt at emulating any sort of proper medieval court etiquette thrown right out the window. The fact that I can't recall a single one of the main characters' names besides Daemon might be because this is a pilot, or it could be because none of them stood out as being even remotely interesting or likable. The only reason I know this goblin looking freak's name is because he's played by Matt Smith and also because he looks like a low budget Elric knockoff in plastic armor. Seriously HBO, you guys made both Deadwood and Rome and yet you give one of the main characters in the follow-up to your most successful show of all time a plastic helmet that even the most cash-strapped cosplayer would be hesitant to wear? Another baffling choice was to have the series premiere fly through several key plot points and events that early Game of Thrones would have unfolded over an entire season. The original show's first season might have been slow, but it was used to set up its main characters, their loyalties, and their disdain for each other, while also foreshadowing and setting up major events that the season would ultimately end on and that would be used as foundation for the rest of the series. For example, in Season 1, when Ned's head got forcibly separated from his body, one of the only reasons I felt emotions that could be construed as sadness and anger was because I had gotten to kinda like Ned and to absolutely hate Joffrey over the course of a whole season. But when Dollar Store Daenerys' mom gets brutally murdered on the orders of her father halfway through House of the Dragon's pilot, I struggled to care. Besides being horrified at the reality of medieval era medical science, I am unclear if I'm angry with this guy for having her killed, or if I feel sad for him for being put into such an impossible situation. My feelings on all of this are painfully neutral, and that is because I barely know either of them. They've only interacted with each other for a single brief scene, and the reason they've only had a single brief scene together is because this is the pilot, and she dies halfway through it. Her death should have been the mid-season or season finale. We would then have enough time to get attached to the both of them, and the show could hammer home just how much is writing on her unborn child. And early Game of Thrones would have done just that, fast forwarding through plot points just to get to the big moments without taking time to set things up properly is exactly what killed the second half of the original show. And if the pilot is anything to go on, it appears House of the Dragon has not learned this lesson. I went into the show with an open mind and subterranean expectations, and somehow I was still disappointed. If House of the Dragon continues on its present course, then I'll probably end up dropping it after season one. My legal team also advises me to stress for one final time that this is a pilot episode, so until further episodes come out, many of my gripes can be written off as the result of a rush job. Since pilots are usually made as a proof of concept episode to show to studio executives before the show is fully greenlit, and do not always get reshot or touched up before being televised. There has been plenty of great shows that have started off a bit rocky. I am hoping House of the Dragon can pull itself together. Like I said, making sweeping judgments on all of this is kind of pointless because it's only a single episode. 
If I had to give House of the Dragon Season 1, Episode 1 an arbitrary score out of 10, then it would have to be a 6. In truth, I'm giving the show a couple pity points for being a pilot, with the only real compliment I can say is that the show has some very decent cinematography in some of the shots. I should also mention that despite owning a copy of Fire and Blood for over a year now, I've yet to read it, so I cannot speak to the lore accuracy of the show so far. If I'm motivated enough though, I will give you guys an update on my thoughts at a future date. I might even start reading the book, so I can tell you what they did or didn't fuck up. There is a lot more of you here than the last time I checked. Welcome to the channel. Please feel free to check out the older videos if they strike your interest. I try to put out at least one new video a month, give or take a week. And this video, the one you're watching now, is not it. The real video, the one that I've been slaving away on all month, should be out on Friday, hopefully. And that video has actual planning and editing and effort put into it, unlike this one. So, I'll see you then. Goodbye.